Hello and welcome to a video presentation on greatest common factor. Here's what you'll learn. How to find the greatest common factor, or GCF, of two or more whole numbers. Now, please note, this presentation involves solving greatest common factor problems with factor trees. If you're unfamiliar with creating factor trees, you may want to watch my video titled Prime Factorization first. Okay, what is the greatest common factor, or GCF? Well, it's the largest number that divides evenly into two or more whole numbers. I'm going to show you two of the best methods I know of for finding greatest common factor today. One method for finding the greatest common factor of two or more whole numbers is to make a list of all factors of each number. Then write them in order from least to greatest. If I wanted to find the greatest common factor of 24, 36, and 60, I would start by writing out all factors of 24, order them from least to greatest, and I would have this list. I'd do the same thing with 36, and I would have this list. And finally, I'd take all factors of 60, put them in order from least to greatest, and I would end up with this list of factors. Finally, all I have to do is identify the largest number that each list has in common. Take a look at all three lists. What's the largest number in common with all three? It's the number 12. So the greatest common factor, or GCF, of 24, 36, and 60 is 12. Now, while this method will surely work to solve for the greatest common factor, there can be a problem with this method. I've seen many students forget to list all factors of a number, and that can be a problem, especially if you forget the greatest common factor. Then you're going to end up with the wrong answer. So let's take a look at a more foolproof method. The second method I want to show you today is making factor trees. Now I like this method best because it's less prone to error. Let's go ahead and create factor trees for each of our numbers 24, 36, and 60. I can break 24 down into 6 times 4. I know 6 breaks down into 2 times 3, and 4 breaks down into 2 times 2. I'm done factoring 24 because all the numbers at the bottom of my tree are prime numbers. 36 breaks down into 6 times 6, and both 6's break down to 2 times 3. Then I'll factor 60 by breaking it down into 6 times 10. The 6 breaks down into 2 times 3, and the 10 breaks down into 2 times 5. With all of our prime factors at the bottom of each tree, our next step is to see which numbers each tree has in common. When we find a number in common, circle it in that tree and cross it off in the others. We only need to check the numbers in one tree against the numbers in the other trees. Let's use the numbers in the 24 tree to start our search. Start with the first two in the 24 tree. Is there also a 2 in both the 36 and the 60 trees? Take a look. In fact, there is. So circle the 2 in the 24 tree, and cross out 1, 2 in each of the other trees. Now move to the next number in the 24 tree, which is a 3. Is there also a 3 in both the 36 and the 60 trees? In fact, there is. So circle the 3 in the 24 tree. And don't forget to cross out 1, 3 in each of the other trees. Move to the next number in the 24 tree. It's another 2. Is there another 2 in both the 36 and the 60 trees? In fact, there is. So circle the 2 in the 24 tree. And don't forget we're going to cross out 1, 2 in each of the other trees. Finally, move to the next number, which is also the last number in the 24 tree. It's also a 2. Is there another 2 in both the 36 and the 60 trees? Obviously, the answer is no. So we're almost done finding the greatest common factor. We've checked all numbers in the 24 tree against the other trees. Finally, just multiply the circled numbers together. 
So the greatest common factor of 24, 36, and 60 is 2 times 3 times 2. The answer is 12, exactly the same as we got in the other method. Let's do another one using factor trees. Find the greatest common factor of 60 and 45. We can break 60 down into 6 times 10. 6 breaks down into 2 times 3, and 10 breaks down into 2 times 5. 45 breaks down into 5 times 9. 5 is already prime, but we know we can break 9 down into 3 times 3. Now, now, let's not leave that 5 hanging up there in the 45 tree. Let's make sure we pull it down to the bottom. That way we won't forget it when we're looking for greatest common factors. With all of our prime factors at the bottom of each tree, our next step is to see which numbers each tree has in common. When we find a number in common, remember we're going to circle it in that tree and cross it off in the others. We only need to check the numbers in one tree against the numbers in any other trees. Let's use the numbers in the 45 tree this time to start our search because there are fewer numbers to check. Start with the 5 in the 45 tree. Is there a 5 in the other tree? Sure enough, there is. So circle the 5 in the 45 tree. And don't forget, we're going to cross out the 5 in the 60 tree. Moving to the next number in the 45 tree, it's a 3. Is there a 3 in the other tree? Yes. So circle the 3 in the 45 tree, and don't forget to cross out the 3 in the other tree. Move to the next number in the 45 tree, it's another 3. Is there another 3 in the other tree? The answer is no. So we're almost done. We've checked all numbers in the 45 tree against the 60 tree. So finally, we just multiply the circled numbers together. And the greatest common factor of 60 and 45 is 5 times 3, or 15. Let's do one with three numbers this time. Find the greatest common factor of 504, 132, and 96. We're going to make factor trees. Let's break 504 down first into 9 times 56. We know 9 breaks down into 3 times 3. 56 breaks down into 8 times 7. Both 3's and the 7 are prime, but 8 is composite, so I can break it down further into 4 times 2, and the 4 will break down into 2 times 2. Now move over to the 132. Let's start making a tree. Factors are 2 and 66. 2 is prime, but 66 breaks down into 33 and 2, and 33 will break down into 11 and 3. Now move over to 96. Factors are 8 and 12. I can break 8 down into 4 times 2. The 4 will break down further into 2 times 2. Break 12 down into 2 times 6, and the 6 will break down further into 3 times 2. Now, let's pull all of our upper branches down to the bottom so we don't forget any of those factors as we proceed to find the greatest common factor. So I've got a 3 I can pull down in the 504 tree. Another 3 can come down. A 2 can come down, as well as a 7. In the 132 tree, I've got a 2 that needs to come down and another 2 that needs to come down. And in the 96 tree, I have two 2's that need to come down to the lower level. With all of our prime factors at the bottom of each tree, our next step is to see which numbers each tree has in common. When we find a number in common, remember, circle it in that tree and cross it off in the others. Let's use the numbers in the tree with the smallest number of branches. That would be the 132 tree. Start with the first 2 in the 132 tree. Is there also a 2 in both the 504 and 96 trees? Certainly there is. So circle the 2 in the 132 tree, and cross out one 2 in each of the other trees. Now move to the next number in the 132 tree. That's an 11. Is there also an 11 in both the 504 and 96 trees? The answer is no. 
So we can move to the next number in the 132 tree, which is a 3. Is there also a 3 in both the 504 and 96 trees? The answer is yes. So circle the 3 in the 24 tree. And don't forget to cross out one 3 in each of the other trees. Finally, move to the next number, which is also the last number in the 132 tree. It's a 2. Is there another 2 in both of the trees? Yes, there is another 2 available. So we're going to circle the 2 in the 24 tree. And don't forget to cross out one 2 in each of the other trees. There we go. We're just about ready to find the greatest common factor because we've checked all numbers in the 132 tree against the 504 and 96 trees. So the final step is to multiply all circled numbers together. And the greatest common factor of 504, 132, and 96 is 2 times 3 times 2. Or our answer is 12. Now here's a special case for greatest common factor. If the numbers you're analyzing have no numbers in common in all of the trees, the greatest common factor, or GCF, is 1. And here's why. Let's find the greatest common factor of, say, 2, 3, 8, and 12. And we're going to use method number 1 by listing the factors of each number. The factors of 2 are 1 and 2. The factors of 3 are 1 and 3. The factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8. And the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So what's the largest number in common in each list? It's easy to see. It's just 1. So when it appears there are no numbers in common, remember, there's always a 1. Congratulations! You've learned to find the greatest common factor, or GCF, of two or more whole numbers.